بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي أرسل رسوله بالحدى ودين الحق ليثير والدين كله ولو كر المشركون والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين من بشفست الإسلام بهم هاتنا غوص الفائدة وبزيتنا دوحة انقطع mit äh, dem Sheikh Dr. Bilal Phillips und ähm, ich muss sagen, von meiner Seite aus ist es echt eine riesengroße Freude, mit dem ähm, Sheikh Dr. Bilal Phillips heute hier zu sitzen, weil er ist jemand, äh, der in meiner ersten Zeit, wie ich zum Islam gekommen bin, mich auch sehr ähm, beeinflusst hat, weil er eine sehr überzeugende Art hat zu reden und auch sehr viel gelernt hat. Er ist einer der wenigen Leute, die aus dem Westen, denn er hat kanadische Staatsbürgerschaft, der kommt ursprünglich aus Jamaika, er ist einer der wenigen, die in der Jami Islamia in Medina abgeschlossen haben und danach nochmal in Riyadh den Magistertitel gemacht haben. Später hat er einen Doktortitel von der Universität in Wales bekommen. Und er ist jemand, der seit über 30 Jahren in der Dauerarbeit aktiv ist und er war schon in so vielen Ländern auf der Welt, in Indien, in Australien, in Kanada, Amerika, schon Holland, UK, also Großbritannien, überall hat dort Vorträge gemacht. Man hat natürlich dadurch eine sehr große Erfahrung, von der ich als Anfänger in der Dauerarbeit natürlich auch profitieren will. Und worum es mir heute geht ist, wir wissen, dass das islamische Wissen eine ganz wichtige Sache ist. Und wir wissen, dass der Prophet wassalam, gesagt hat, Man salaka tariqen fi ilmen, Allahu tariqen ila jannah. Das heißt, wer einen Weg zum Wissen sucht, den wird Allah den Weg zum Paradies leicht machen. Und der Dr. Bilal Phillips, der hat ein Programm gestartet, weil er kennt auch die Bedürfnisse der Leute aus dem Westen. Und er weiß, dass es viele Menschen, für viele Menschen unmöglich ist, äh, beispielsweise sechs, sieben Jahre nach Medina oder nach Mekka zu gehen. Er hat deswegen eine einmalige super Sache gemacht, wo ich nur sagen kann, dass ich das jedem empfehlen kann. Das ist äh, die Islamic Online University. Und wir haben diese Seite, also www islamiconlineuniversity dot also punkt com wir haben das auch jetzt auf unserer Seite und wir wollen, dass ihr daran teilnehmt wir wollten den Sheikh Dr. Bilal Phillips zu diesem Projekt fragen das heißt, ich wollte mit ihm dann dieses Interview auf Englisch machen, damit er genau erklären kann, was es mit dem Kurs auf sich hat Dr. Bilal, uh, Salam Alaikum Alaikum Salam Alaikum about your uh, Islamic online university. I just told in, uh, in um, I introduced you, your person and uh, that you have a lot of experience in the Dawah field that you studied in Medina and uh, Riyadh and that you went all over the world and make Dawah and that you know the necessi uh, the, the, how the people need Islamic knowledge, especially in the West and that it's not uh, possible for everybody to go abroad to study there six years so you um, made up this Islamic online university and what I wanted from you that you for example uh, explain to us how this works for example one that maybe a Muslim from Germany is a new Muslim how he can study in your university now in your online university well, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam wa rasulillah, all praise is due to Allah and may Allah's peace and blessings be on the last messenger of Allah. Um, the university is basically uh, geared for the world uh, with an English base. Uh, there is one section of it which consists of short courses having 10, 12, or 15 uh, lectures or maybe as low as eight lectures um, covering different topics and they have been arranged in a um, level you have like level one, level two, level three, level four now these lectures are mine as well as lectures of other people like Sheikh Abdul Rauf, Sheikh Salim Al Amri, Sheikh Abu Adi Salam you know and others you know and their lectures are being added so that section uh, a person can come in, register, uh, they will be sent uh, you know, a student um, code and then they can start to study at their own will. They are, there are no costs involved, there are no time restraints. They can come in and go out as they will. Okay. And uh, that, so that we call our diploma or certificate uh, side okay. courses. Then the other side, for those who want serious study, those who really want uh, 
uh, a BA level study. We have a BA program which we started back in March where they have to upload uh, the high school certificates. If it's in German, then it has to be translated into English. And these have to be attested to affirm that this is in fact a legal document. And, um, and there are some minimal fees for registration and uh, examination, but there are no tuition free fees. Okay, so this is a lot of information. So you have first of all, like short courses, mm -hmm. and uh, secondly, you have this uh, BA. Yeah, the BA course, course uh, for example, the, uh, first you should, one needs to know how is the material presented uh, in general, whether it's on the short courses or in the BA program, uh, you have recorded lectures. Uh, the recorded lectures uh, then uh, are supported by PDF files which uh, give the written text of that lecture so the student can uh, look at the, the material at whilst he is listening or after he has listened or he can just read the material and not watch. Yeah, yeah. Or there's also audio. You can listen to the audio instead of watch it. You can make audio copies, stick it in your car okay. whilst you're driving. You can listen to it. But then after each lesson is complete, after you're finished either watching, listening, reading, then there is a small test, yeah, yeah. you know, a multiple choice test for each, you could say, module for each yeah, uh, yeah. lecture. Okay. okay. So that is the same in both the... Uh, short courses as well as in the uh, BA course. But the difference in the BA course is that we also have live sessions. For every two recorded uh, uh, lecture by the professor, there is a live session where the student um, comes into what is called a virtual classroom with a tutorial assistant who has mastery of the subject, he's not the professor, or even sometimes he might be, but in most cases it's somebody else who may be a BA graduate or something like this, who will then answer whatever questions the students have from the okay. two recorded lectures that they watched. Okay, that's in the BA program. Yeah. In the uh, diploma program there are no live sessions, yeah. so the program just goes on. You will get assignments. There will be assignments that you have to do, which you, uh, you write, then you send them in. We have people who will grade those assignments, and the marks are added to your marks. Uh, and then you have a, either a midterm exam and a final exam, or just a final exam if the course is quite short. Yeah. You know, I mean, for me, when, when I hear this, it's very, uh, really great, you know, because uh, it's an alternative, somebody you know he normally has to go to university and he sees the doctor live but now we have just uh, you know videotape the, the lecture and later on he can see it whenever he wants at home you know mm -hmm. if, he, if he has no time for, and that's a possibility also for somebody who's working he's maybe working in the morning he cannot go to university so he sees the lecture at night you know it's, it's, it's very great and especially that it's written and also for hearing uh, mm -hmm. audio so, um, uh, what I understood from this, you know, the short courses can also be used for somebody, for example, who wants to try how it fits f for his situation. Maybe he makes first a free course uh, and looks how it works, everything, and later on he uh, goes into this VA course. Sure. Uh, I would also say that, you know, for people who are new Muslims, that uh, the courses in the, in the certificate level, those courses are probably more appropriate because they're more simple. There's one course called um, the Foundations of Islamic Studies, which has 21 parts. I would advise any new Muslim who's coming before going into the BA program to do this first. Yeah, yeah. Also, there is reading and writing uh, Arabic courses, which I would advise them to take also first because uh. You'll be going into the BA program uh, with Tajweed, for example. Yeah. Tajweed requires that you do have some knowledge of, of yeah, Arabic. Of course, yeah, yeah. So, and my advice would be that for those who want to take it, um, they may go ahead and register, but before actually going into the BA courses, 
do from the certificate the foundations of Islamic studies which will give them an overview of all of the basic areas of Islamic disciplines, Islamic sciences and, and also do the Arabic course that is there for reading and writing. I, I also saw there's a, a short course for Tahara for uh, purification yeah. and for prayer mm -hmm. and especially this is very important for new Muslims. For new Muslims, yeah. yeah so, so I would say in general, you know, most of the courses in the certificate level would be ideal for new Muslims to build up their foundation. Yeah, really. You know now the BA course, how long does it take somebody to uh, come it's out? four years. The, uh, four years. Yeah. And he can also take uh, take long term, for example. It can be longer yeah, if yes. he takes less subjects, or it can be shorter. It could be down to as as, as little as three years, because um, we have six to seven subjects per semester. Yeah. Uh, if they take more, they take say ten subjects per semester. Uh, uh, when we when we have the full offering, right now uh, we are because we just started, uh, so. Those who are joining us now have to take what's available. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but once the course gets moving, we're going to the fall semester in September, then those who are joining in September, they could conceivably take courses which are from the first semester as well as courses from the second semester. Yeah. So, um, Depending yeah. on the amount of time, really, yeah, of it's, it's really up to the amount of time that the person has that yeah. they can, you know, give to the study. So it's very comfortable for somebody. He can study at home and he can choose what what he takes. Always, you know, six uh, subjects in a semester, for example, it's it's not too much. You know, it's uh, it's possible. And to what kind? To of be honest, I mean, it seems to be. Yeah, <laughs> you have to give it, you know, a it's consistent hard. amount of time. Yeah. Uh, it, it is uh, because every subject you figure, if you have six subjects yeah. and you have two classes a week, okay, so you have to, if one given subject, yeah. you've got two hours that you need to listen, right? Yeah. And let's say give another two hours to read over that same material. At least, yes, yeah. of course. Okay, so, so that's four hours for one subject. Okay. Okay. And then you have the test also, uh, so you're preparing yourself for the test. Well, even, even we just call it four hours. Yes, yes. Four hours times uh, six subjects. That's that's six uh, hours. Is 24 hours. Yeah, of course. Okay. I mean, with comfortable. I don't mean uh, you know it's easy, but I mean you know he can choose when he learns. You know, for for example, for somebody he has to go to university now. At this time, you have to be uh, available. It's maybe hard, but so he can uh, choose whatever time he learns, of course. Yeah, but the bottom line is, we can say that if you have seven days in a week, yeah. uh, and you, you decide you're going to put in six days evenings studies, yeah. you have to think in terms of four hours each evening. Okay. <laughs> so it's not a joke, right? Yeah, yeah, no, I don't say it's a joke. No, 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 I no, I, I, what I mean, though, is that yeah. it is, it, it, yeah, the, what it is saying is that even though, uh, say, you might miss one night, uh, yeah. or on, you can put two hours a night and then make up the rest on the weekend, yeah. you know, for, for your Saturday and Sunday, for example. Yeah. For, so you, but you'll need to be putting in some consistent amount yeah. of hours every day. Yes. So, so you have to, it has to be take in a disciplined way. You have to be very keen. Way. In so you have to do it in a disciplined way. Yeah. I mean, there's flexibility, meaning that you, you know, you this can... This is what I mean. This yeah, is the word I mean. There's flexibility there. But still, you know, it's, it can't be done, well, when I feel like it. Otherwise, yeah. it's not going to work. Yeah, yeah. They will not, the person yeah. will not be able to keep up with the, the requirements of the classes, or the assignments, yeah, yeah. or the midterm, and it's all going to yeah. pile up on them. Like yeah. deal this is the exact term I, 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 uh, I, wanted. I, was, I wanted, you know, flexibility. Mm. Yeah, for example, now, uh, what, what kind of subjects do you have? I saw, for example, Akida, Mustala, Hadith, and... Uh, it is, uh, we're, ha we're running basically what we would call the Usul al-Din, Da'wah and Usul al-Din yeah. uh, course. Yeah. You know, we have all of the basic topics that are covered in Dawa, all of the basic topics covered in Usul al-Din. Usul al-Din meaning you're going to have Aqidah, you'll have Fiqh, you'll have Hadith, you'll have Tafsir, you'll have Sirah, uh, you'll have Arabic, uh, Grammar, uh, 
and um, we also add uh, courses which are we could say supplementary courses for anybody graduating to be effective in working in community, doing community work, etc., or teaching, etc. So we have courses in teaching methodology from an Islamic perspective, in, uh, in administration, Islamic administration, okay. in uh, Islamic finance. Yeah. Uh, we have uh, courses also in, um, uh, in uh, studies of minorities, minority studies, Muslim minorities around the world, uh, we have courses which deal with organizations. Yes. How do Islamic organizations function? Yes. Looking at those organizations, how to set up an Islamic an organization. Yeah, yeah. So, we, uh, yeah, you know, so we have a variety of supportive courses which, which should give the the graduate the ability to either run an Islamic institution yeah. or to teach in an Islamic institution, yeah. to be a consultant to an Islamic institution, so to be a translator, no, or to just use that in their own field. For example, maybe they're an engineer. Use that knowledge to guide them as an engineer how to apply their skills in a way which is most beneficial Islamically. Yeah. to beneficial to the Muslim community, so, etc. So I see your aim is not only uh, that the people learn for themselves, but that they also teach it afterwards and that the Islamic community uh, uh, benefits from it. This, yeah. This is what, yeah. yeah. Because this as Muslims, we're, we're, not, we're not individuals. We are, yeah. we are part of a community. Of course, I just mentioned this because mm. some people think, yes, I learned only for myself and afterwards it doesn't matter, I need to pray and I, if I know to pray it's okay but I don't teach other people so I see uh, your concept is based or focused on people who also want to uh, benefit the community well, you know, the, 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 bottom li the bottom line is that of course those people who just want the knowledge for themselves you say come get it, take it, yeah, benefit from it okay. <laughs> but of course Prophet Muhammad he said خَيْرُكُمْ مَنْ تَعَلَّمَ الْقُرْآنَ وَعَلَّمَهُ the best of you are those who learn the Quran and teach it to others. Okay, so that is the best. Yeah. Good is to learn the Quran. <laughs> yes. If you didn't teach it to anybody, it's still good. Yes, you yes. benefited from it, you improve your salah, it, you know, whatever. So we, we, we are there for both. I mean, ultimately we do want people to be able to share the knowledge because that is the ultimate level. Ultimate you know, level. And that is where the greatest benefit is. Yes. How, um, so you told us how, how much time somebody needs to uh, benefit and somebody needs uh, for learning in this course. Now, if you compare, you studied in Medina and you studied in, uh, in, uh, in uh, Riyadh and you make this course up. So, if you now um, make a, um, comparison. a comparison between the studies, for example, in Medina or somebody who graduates from Medina and somebody who graduates from your course, you know, what are the disadvantages or what are the advantages, you know, how would you compare it? Well, uh, the bottom line is that Islamic knowledge is fundamentally uh, in Arabic, okay? Yeah. So, a person who studies Arabic formally, yeah. spends two to three years studying Arabic, then goes into a full course of study in Arabic medium, you know, from the depth of knowledge in Arabic, he will have a greater access, yes. no doubt. However, the essence of what is being studied is taught in our program. Yes. In the Islamic Online University, a person who studies it will study the essence of what is there. He will study enough uh, and have enough knowledge to be able to teach others, to benefit others, benefit himself, etc. So the, the main studies will be there. And he will also be getting Arabic, which will enable him in the future to go further, you know, in yes. the studies in the Arabic medium. So, you know, I mean, the, the point is that there are levels. The study in Medina and in Arabic institutions is going to be higher, no yeah. doubt. Yeah. You know, what we have is something which may have additional benefits in the sense that, uh, you know, we are getting some other skills because we have included those other subjects of Islamic finance and, and at business administration and, and these other courses which would then give the student, the graduating student, other skills and would strengthen him in, in the field of da'wah as well as uh, in, in his Islamic knowledge. This is exactly what I wanted to say because I, I looked at your program and I, 
it seemed to me from the beginning that you're very focused on the Dawa work, that the, the, the one who graduates from this course, that he's able to, to, make, to, to give Dawa to other people. Now, um, you said it, uh, it is almost f- for, uh, four years. What I uh, see also as an as, as advantage, especially from, for, for people in the West, if they study, for example, in English, uh, they can also teach in English. I mean, for example, in, in Germany, or maybe it's also in some English-speaking countries, there's most uh, durus, most lectures are always in Arabic or in Turkish and so. And so I think for the non-Muslims, if somebody learns the religion in, um, in English, it's easier for him maybe to handle with non-Muslims, because he has all these terms, he, he has uh, memorized them. For example, now... Uh, you, you learned in Arabic, of course, I don't say don't learn in Arabic, you know, I, I try also, but I, I just want to mention this, because I see this as an advantage, because there are some terms in Arabic, for example, so he, how do we translate this if we don't talk to somebody, or how do we translate uh, Mustala, how do we translate this and that, so I think it's, it's also an advantage maybe for the people in this, in this point. Yeah, you know. I mean, considering that English is basically the international language, yeah, sure. you know, which all people are learning all over the world. Yeah, yeah. So for Dawa purposes, definitely, you know, having the course in English is a definite advantage. Yeah. Maybe, for example, uh, in my case, I was thinking about this and I said, you know, I said to myself, you know, if I study these courses, you know, I will also benefit from my English, you know, very much, because if we always hear to lectures and we always read, you know, we benefit because we learn new words, and so it's also very beneficial. You know, um, maybe you want to give some last words to the brothers and sisters in Germany, or... Well, alhamdulillah, you know, this is a great blessing from Allah that He has made His uh, uh, knowledge institution available so that it can reach into your homes. Uh, you have been relieved of, of the burden of having to travel and, you know, as people of the past to gain knowledge, they had to, you know, get out on in journeys. As why the Prophet ﷺ had said, you know, whoever takes a path in which he seeks knowledge, Allah will make the path to paradise easy for them. Because seeking that knowledge in the past especially, it involved effort, a lot of effort to go out and travel for it. But uh, of course today, uh, with this now available, we don't have to go out, but there still is effort. Because to gain this knowledge, even though it's now so readily accessible to us, one does have to set aside time. You know, one has to manage one's time effectively. If one is going to seriously seek this knowledge, then one has to organize a day. Uh, organize the time in your day. What are the things you're doing in the day? And set aside a slot for the study. Yeah. Because if you just leave it as, yeah, I will study every day. <coughs> you know, this is my intention. You know, uh, then things will come up. Our lives are busy. There's so many different distractions, etc. We'll not be able to do yeah. it. You know, we'll not be able to be consistent and to keep it going. So this is why you know I would advise you uh, not only to commit yourself to come and study, but also commit yourself to sacrificing from your time uh, for the sake of Allah to get this knowledge. Yes, I have another question, I, I, I forgot. This BA course, this bachelor's course, it's accredited? Um, how is it? At the moment it is not accredited, but we are in negotiations with a university in uh, southern Philippines, in the, uh, what they call the um, autonomous region of Muslim Mindanao yes. where they have accredited universities recognized by the Philippine government and uh, thus they are recognized internationally. Uh, one of the institutions there is currently in our, um, discussion with us to issue the degrees for us. So within a month or so we will be able to announce that uh, our degrees will be accredited. How many students are now studying in this Islamic online university? Those in the uh, diploma course, yes, uh, it's over 26,000 from 177 different countries around Allah the world. Allah. You know, uh, those that have started the BA program in um, 
in, in March, yes. we have about 250 yes. who signed up for that semester. There were 2,000 who applied. Yeah. But the process of registration, turning in your documents and everything, out of all of that, 250 yeah. completed the process and are currently studying. Yeah. And we now but that's just... But great. So yeah, 250, sure. sure. When, when, I, when we started a, um, you know, a program in Ajman, uh, yeah. in the UAE, when I did a whole startup with the Department of Islamic Studies there, I mean, we started with uh, uh, 30 students. Yeah. You know, this is 250, sure, it's a, it's a big number. Yeah, it's Actually, and we expect, we've now opened up the, the doors again for registration for the fall, for the, sub, for the, for the September uh, fall semester. Your registration is going on now. People can apply now. Okay, so the next semester begins in September. Yeah, so, so we'll have two intakes every year. Once in September and the other one in February, really, okay. February. So for the Geschwister in Deutschland, you can just bewerb in September, so that you can start, so that you can really learn there, four years of study. And I can just say from Sheikh Dr. Bilal Phillips, that can man really, really from profiting. And many of my unterrichts that I have done, where you maybe say, ah, super examples, for example, for example, this example that I have brought up with the child, with the with the impfung, yeah, that the child does not know. Warum die Impfung gut ist, aber der Erwachsene weiß, warum die Impfung gut ist. Und der Gott ist äh, natürlich all, viel allweiser und wissender, also allweiser und allwissend und weiß mehr als wir. Das sind alles Beispiele, die ich auch von Dr. Bilal Phillips äh, kopiert habe. Das wollte ich nur äh, kurz an dieser Stelle mal gesagt haben. I just uh, told them that they have to uh, try to uh, applicate uh, for the admission, you know, for September. And, uh, and uh, so it's in February and September the semester uh, begins over the like Yeah, the fall semester in, in September, yeah. the spring semester in February. Okay. So we take, we have two semesters per year. Okay, so good. The Arabic level, because you are studying Arabic and Islamic knowledge at the same time. Yeah. So I saw in every semester there is, uh, you teach course. Arabic. Yeah. After three years, uh, well, how do you expect the level in Arabic for the people who study? This I mean, those who graduate, I mean, the four-year course, they should have uh, gotten enough to be able to read uh, basic Arabic texts um, and to further their studies uh, in, in Arabic. I mean, they will not, the spoken Arabic will not be as strong as if they had been in an institution in an Arabic country, yeah. you know. But uh, it, and uh, the Arabic is uh, to a large degree depends on the effort that the individual puts in. Yeah. So some people may graduate and they're you know maybe they can hardly hear and understand. Others may graduate and hear and understand well. You know there's different. Uh, the, the, sure. But the potential is there if a person applies themselves, gives it the sufficient time, that they should come out with a decent level of Arabic. You know uh, to be able to read basic. Yeah. Uh, texts in Islam. Yeah, because a lot of people are very interested in uh, learning Arabic, and uh, and uh, so this is why I asked this question. You know, with, uh, Yusuf Essence, he mentioned in one lecture, uh, he said it's free uh, advertisement. He said that this Arabic program that you teach, it, you developed developed it by yourself. This is right. Yes. Yeah, there is um, a basic. The basic Arabic um, grammar for the first two semesters yeah. uh, I developed. There's a book I wrote called Arabic Grammar Made Easy. Yeah. Um, but that is just to give the student a, a brief introduction to Arabic grammar through the medium of English. After that, then they go into all Arabic studies where you know, a professor or PhD from Azhar yeah. or elsewhere will be teaching Arabic from either the Medina books, oh, okay. right, which are standard books used in Medina University in their yeah. language department, or they will be, you know, what they call it, Arabiya Bayna Yadek, you know, which is a common one used in many of the uh, institutions around the world. So, so uh, in the later levels there are different uh, teachers, yeah. for example in Arabic from Egypt and so yeah. on. That's ah, very good to know. I think and for Tajweed I should mention that we do have 
female Tajweed uh, ah. instructors who will be working with the females because Tajweed involves uh, a much yeah. closer yeah. contact and listening carefully yeah. and communication with females on a big scale. So if we do have, you know, uh, females who are qualified, fully qualified for uh, for supervising the the uh, what we call the live classes of yeah. the Tajweed course. That's very good. Okay, I think that's uh, enough or did I, did I forget something? <laughs> okay. Inshallah. Inshallah. I am really happy to meet you here and I hope that it will, uh, will be beneficial for the Muslims in Germany and that a lot of people try, or even if, it's, if, it's, uh, if some you know, try to make this course, because what we really need in Germany are people who learned Islamic knowledge and who are able and willing to to speak this message that's very important so Jazakallah Khairan and I want to thank you one more time I want to say one more time Jazakallah Khairan because I also benefited uh, benefit a lot from you from your lectures in <laughs> one more time Jazakallah Khairan and also we just like to to uh, greet those students from Germany you know, who are already enrolled in the program because there, is, there are a number who are already I don't uh, I haven't got the exact statistics to tell you how many, but there are a number from Germany who are ready. I want to know who you are. <laughs> so, um, inshallah, you can contact our brother Abu Hamza Please, you know, yeah, and help to promote the uh, course yeah. uh, more amongst the Germans. Especially for the Germans who are already in this course. I would like to make an interview with you that you share with us your uh, experience in this course because we want to make, motivate the people to study and to learn because what we need in Germany and I know some people from Holland and from other countries and from, from uh, Switzerland and from Austria are also listening maybe Allahu Alam so I tell you what we need in the West we need people who learn the religion and who are willing to speak this message so learn here this is one of the uh, this is uh, one of the best uh, uh, opportunities for you. <laughs> okay, one more time. Assalamu alaikum.